What's up guys, my name is Sam and today we're going to be looking at the 2021 High Level Maths Paper 2, Question 4. So today's question requires a good knowledge of trigonometric identities and the unit circle to get full marks, but hopefully with my help we'll be able to get through this question no problem at all. So let's get right into the video. So this is a trigonometry question worth 30 marks and in part A, part 1, we're being asked to prove that cos of 2a is equal to cosine squared of a minus sine squared of a. So basically how we're going to solve this question is we're going to use a compound angle formula from our logbook to try and prove that this statement is true. So looking at our logbook on the compound angle formula page we can see that the cosine of a plus b is equal to the cosine of a times cosine of b minus sine a times sine b. So looking back at our question, as you can see in purple, I've written down our formula from our logbook. However, instead of putting a plus b into this formula, I'm going to put a plus a. So now what we're left with is we have the cosine of a plus a on the left hand side, which is also just the cosine of 2a, which is what we want. And then the right hand side, we have cosine of a times cosine of a, which is actually just cosine squared of a minus sine a times sine a, which is actually just sine squared of a. And so after simplifying our expression a little bit, we can see that we do indeed have exactly what we are trying to prove. And so finding this will give us the full 10 marks for this question. Moving on to part two, we're told that the sine of some angle theta over two is equal to one over root five. And basically we're being asked to use the formula we, we just proved in the previous part to find the value of cosine of theta. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let a be equal to theta over two. And so that means that two a will be equal to theta. So now let's fill in these values for a and two a into our trigonometric identity which leaves us with cosine theta is equal to cosine squared of theta over two minus sine squared of theta over two. Before we go any further with this equation, I want to remind ourselves of a very important trigonometric identity that we should all be familiar with. And that is of course, that sine squared a plus cosine squared of a is equal to one. So this is an extremely important identity. And if you don't know this off by heart, I'd strongly recommend learning it because it always comes up handy whenever you're doing trigonometric questions like this. So what I want to do is I want to rearrange this equation so it involves this identity sine squared a plus cos squared a. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our right hand side by sine squared theta over 2 and then we're going to subtract our right hand side by sine squared theta over 2. And so now that I've done this, obviously since I'm adding and subtracting the exact same term from the right hand side, I'm not affecting the equation whatsoever. However, I can now write this expression on the right hand side in a way which we can use our identity sine squared a plus cos squared a. So on the left hand side, we have cosine of theta and on the right hand side, we have cosine squared theta over two plus sine squared theta over two minus two times sine squared theta over two. And as you can see, we do indeed have this sine squared a plus cosine squared a. And so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to substitute one now into our equation. So now we're left with cosine of theta is equal to one minus two sine squared of theta over two. However, we know that sine of theta over two is equal to one over root five. So let's substitute this into our equation, which leaves us with cosine of theta is equal to one minus two times one over root five squared, which is going to be equal to one minus two over five, which finally is equal to three over five. And so finding this gives us our value of cosine theta, which is what we're looking for. And so this is our final answer. And finding this will give us the full 10 marks for this question. So moving on to part B, we're being asked to solve the equation tan of B plus 150 degrees is equal to negative square root of three. And we're told that our angle B is greater than or equal to zero degrees and less than or equal to 360 degrees. So first thing we want to do here is we want to find a reference angle by finding the inverse tan of square root of three. And we'll find that this is going to be equal to 60 degrees. And you may be thinking, why do we use positive root three to find a reference angle when the question has negative root three in it? And the simple answer is when you're using your reference angle, you always use the positive number basically. So next, I want to determine the range of values that our angle B plus 150 degrees can lie within. 
So we have that B plus 150 must be greater than or equal to 150 because we know that B is greater than or equal to zero. And we also know that B plus 150 degrees will be less than or equal to 510 degrees as B is less than or equal to 360 degrees. So next, I want to determine what quadrants our answer for B plus 150 degrees will lie within. So looking at our unit circle, we can see that tan is going to be positive in the first and third quadrants. But since tan B plus 150 degrees is equal to negative root three, we're looking for the quadrant where tan is negative. And so that will be in the second and fourth quadrants. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find the angle for B plus 150 degrees in the second quadrant. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take 180 degrees and then we're going to subtract away our reference angle, which is 60 degrees, leaving us with 120 degrees. However, as you can see, 120 degrees is not within our range of values for B plus 150. So to find the actual angle that we need, which is in the second quadrant, what we're going to do is we're going to add 360 to 120. And this will give us our angle of 480 degrees. Now it is time to find our angle in our fourth quadrant. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take 360 degrees and then subtract away our reference angle of 60 degrees, leaving us with 300 degrees. And of course, 360 degrees is in our range of values for B plus 150 degrees. So 300 degrees is our other angle. So now we want to solve for B. So I have here that B plus 150 is equal to 300. So to find B, we're going to subtract both sides by 150, which will give us our first answer of B is equal to 150 degrees. And now to find our second answer, we have 150 degrees plus B is equal to 480 degrees. And again, we're simply going to subtract both sides by 150 which will give us our second answer, which is B is equal to 330 degrees. And so finding these two answers will give you the full marks for this question, which is 10 marks. So I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I hope I've given you a great understanding in how you can use trigonometric identities to solve different questions on trigonometry. And I also hope I've given you a great understanding into how the unit circle works. So I really hope you're all having a nice day, and I'll see you guys soon.